Darius, thank you so much for joining me today. Nice to be with you, Morgan. Good to see you. So I have to start with geopolitics because it is certainly what is getting the world's attention, including investors right now. How are you navigating the Russia-Ukraine conflict? And I ask that not just from an operational standpoint in the region, but also in terms of these sanctions that are now starting to roll out. Well, it's obviously been a very, very quickly evolving situation. Um, and it, if we kind of take it on to our, our business in Ukraine actually is relatively small. Um, we have less than 50 employees there. And obviously, uh, we've been trying to assist them in, in the best way we can and, and uh, making sure that they're getting to safety. You know, Russia, it's a little bit, bit uh, bigger. It's, you know, roughly about 1% of our revenue base. Um, and we were trying to monitor both the supply chain, the sanctions, and so on. It's the situation obviously changes by the hour. Um, so it's kind of hit us fast and furious here, but we're already making arrangements and plans. The safety of all our employees is our first and foremost objective. And then we're also looking at the supply chain, the ability to continue to transact business, all those things, and uh, obviously making a lot of contingency plans if we can't do certain things. So it's evolving very, very quickly. Mm. It's such a tricky situation, and I, I can't tell you how many executives I speak to that say that they are going through dozens of pages worth of material where these sanctions alone are concerned right now. I mean, on the one hand, Honeywell has a significant book of defense business, and we're already seeing defense budgets uh, both here in the U.S. and among allies begin to increase. On the other hand, you do supply into the commercial aerospace and, and aviation uh, industry as well, and that's an area at least analysts are a little bit concerned about where things like supply chain, for example, uh, could be impacted. So how are you assessing the broader impact potentially to the Honeywell portfolio? I, I think you correctly uh, point out, Morgan, there are some puts and takes exactly how long this will impact us in the longer term is, is hard to ju judge right now. Obviously, we think that you know, some of our defense and space business could benefit. Some of the aviation business, at least temporarily, might be slightly impacted. Um, you know, obviously, the uh, airlines would have to fly more circuitous routes to get around the uh, airspace of, of Russia. But, you know, I think there's a greater correlation to emergence from COVID. I think that's the biggest drive in terms of air transport and so on. And, you know, we're seeing the flight rates pick up and we expect those to continue to pick up. You know, obviously on a regional basis and in and out of Russia, that will be a, that'll be a negative. But overall, we see aviation continuing to gain momentum through, uh, throughout the year. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about supply chain because we've seen these challenges across many different industries, across many different companies. Honeywell has been no exception. Um, the inflation impacts as well. How are you continuing to navigate those issues? And given what we're seeing playing out with Russia, Ukraine, does that potentially push the timeline for a return to more normal levels out further? Yeah, I mean, as it, as it pertains to particularly Russia or Ukraine, we're still assessing the impact of that, if any, uh, for our supply chain, probably more aviation, aerospace oriented than anywhere else. Uh, but overall, I mean, I think that there are some puts and take on the semiconductor side, side. We actually see some small, some green shoots of improvement. So we're actually we've seen some positive things happen and, and we're more and more optimistic. The, air, the aerospace uh, supply chain is impacted. Obviously, there was a lot of capacity taken out of the system in 2020 and 21. Now we're kind of the markets coming back both on the uh, OE side as well as on the uh, aftermarket side. And there is some um, challenges that we're seeing, particularly in things like forgings, castings, and things of that nature. And we're working with our supply base to help them try to get back to capacity, and that will take a few months to work itself out. So there are certainly some of those challenges out there. But I am, but we are seeing certainly some green shoots, particularly in the semiconductor space. Mm. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.